So in this video, I'm going to share with you 15 of my favorite pieces of life advice. Mottos I live by, sayings I love, fantastic quotes that give me all the feels, lessons that I've learned in my 51 years, and they've never steered me wrong. So I'm going to share them with you in the video today. 15 life lessons to live by. The first one, you probably heard it. It is an oldie but goodie. Actions speak louder than words. And last night I sat down to have dinner with my daughters. They were home for the holidays and one of them asked me what I was going to do today. And I said, well, I have to film a video. And she said, well, what's the video going to be about? And I said, it's my 15 favorite mottos, my life lessons. And she said, are you going to tell them actions speak louder than words? And I said, of course. Like my kids know I have been preaching this to them since they were little girls. Actions speak louder than words. What you do and the way that you act always represents the person that you are and not the words that you speak. I have met so many people throughout my life that talk a good game. They are full of BS. They think they can butter up anybody. They can get away with anything if they say the right words. What they say is not who they are. I need to watch their actions. And really it is true for everybody in every situation. Actions speak louder than words. My next life lesson is one that I have taped in the very front of my journal. When I was growing up, you know, you're a teenager, you have posters all over your bedroom. I had Billy Idol and Bon Jovi and all the things because I grew up in the 80s. But taped on the mirror in my bedroom that I saw every single day when I was growing up was this poem. And it's called Commitment. Commitment is what transforms a promise into reality. And I have lived my life by that motto. If I want to do something, if I promise to do something, I'm going to commit myself to doing it. My words are not empty. My promise is not empty. I am committed. And when you commit yourself to something, your thoughts, your values, your dreams, your desires, they all become reality. And commitment is so undervalued in today's world. So yesterday was my 21st wedding anniversary. Randy and I have been married a very long time and we've known each other for way longer than the number of years that we've been married. And my motto is I would rather be happy than right. Because there is always conflict. There is always something that doesn't go right. There is always an issue that could be debated. I was somewhat of a take a stand rebellious child growing up and I found myself in lots of confrontations with my parents. I took a stand. I wanted to be right. I didn't care what the cost of that was. I just was gonna confront them head on and that was for any situation, not necessarily my parents. I was that way in school and I just took a stand and it's fine to take a stand but in the end, sometimes you just really have to realize, do I just want to argue this point? How important is this? Sometimes it's okay to just, you know where your morals are, you know your beliefs, you know your values, but you just don't have to argue them all the time if that argument is just going to bring you unhappiness. So in the case of a marriage, I'm always telling myself, I would rather be happy than right. Now, my husband and I very rarely fight. We joke that we have a fight once a year, but honestly, we probably have not really had what I consider a true argument in maybe the last five years. And it's not that I let people walk all over me. It's not that I just don't take a stand about my values. It There just becomes a point where I would rather be happy than right. It is not worth arguing over. And my next life lesson has to do with college. It's what I learned when I was in college and it is what I have always told my two daughters when they were deciding where to go to college, if they wanted to go to college. I said, going away to college is 50% about the education and 50% about learning life. College is where you figure out who you are. You figure out the person you want to be. You figure out what type of people you want to spend your time with and who you want to surround yourself with. You learn in a somewhat sheltered environment 
how to grow, how to do things for yourself, how to take care of yourself. And to me, that is just as valuable as the education you get when you're away at college. So when my daughters were trying to decide where to go to school, yes, the education's important. Yes, you look at the degrees that are available, but school is not all about the education. It is 50% life. The next life lesson is one that I didn't learn until later in life, and I wish I had known it much, much sooner. When somebody shows you who they are, believe them. I kept trying to tell myself, oh, they'll change. They'll do better. They just made a mistake. That's not really who they are. They just had a bad moment. And the very first time I ever heard that saying, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them, bells went off. I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so true. And I have believed it ever since. I judge new people who come into my life through that filter. And it is absolutely 100% true in almost every single scenario. And I just wish I'd known it earlier. My next life lesson, and it's a hard one to learn. It's a hard one to, to really tell yourself, but it's that nobody, just nobody cares. And I would have loved to have known that a lot of years ago because that would have allowed me to just kind of live my own life and not think about what I was doing from the filter of somebody else looking in on my life. When I get caught up in, I'm having a bad hair day, or somebody's gonna not like what I have on today, or I'm not wearing the most fashionable shoes because y'all, I'm gonna wear some comfy shoes and I don't care what they look like. And that's what I've decided to do these days. But back when I was younger, I thought everybody cared. I thought everybody was judging me. And now that I know, nobody gives a hoot. So I learned to do exactly what I want to and what pleases me and not anybody else. The heart loves who it loves and just go with it. I wish the world could be such a better place if everybody would just love who they love. My next life lesson is a financial one. And I don't know who told me this when I was younger, but somewhere along the way, I heard it. And I got my very first job when I was 14 years old, and I have had a job ever since. And there were some summers and some years in college that I actually had two jobs. There was one year when I graduated from college, I had three jobs. And I always learned to pay myself first. Every time I got a paycheck, even when I was 14, I put that paycheck in my savings account. Yes, I kept a little bit of cash to go out and do things with my friends, but I put it in my savings account. When I got older and I had to support myself, every single paycheck automatically taken out of that paycheck was a certain amount of money that was put into my savings account. Now that can be a retirement account, an IRA, a Roth IRA, whatever you want it to be, an investment account. Take that money out automatically and pay yourself first. When I own my own business, I paid myself first. As hard as that was, sometimes when there just wasn't a lot of money in the bank account, I had employees I had to pay, I had bills I had to pay for the business, and it's really easy to say, well, there's just not a lot of money here, I will pay myself last, or I will pay myself less, or I'll just pay myself more next time to make up for it. No, pay yourself first. You're working, you earned it, Plan ahead, pay yourself, pay yourself first. So when you find yourself in a situation where you need your savings, it is there for you. When you wanna retire, you have money to do so. It is just a wonderful financial lesson, something that I've preached to my kids growing up, and it's something that I think everybody should do, is pay themselves first. I used to get caught up in silly, mundane, everyday tasks. I used to think that I had to clean my house every week. I had to mop the floors, I had to clean the kitchen, I had to wash the sheets, I had to go do all of these things. And for everybody, that list is gonna look a little bit different. But for me, when my girls were younger, I thought I needed to be the perfect wife on the weekends, because I worked all week long, I had a full-time job, I'm raising two girls, but on the weekends, I thought, okay, I need to clean my house. I need to do all these things. I need to 
I need to do laundry and dishes and mop and clean the bathrooms and change the sheets and organize all the things. And I never had any downtime. I never had time for myself because I was so focused on all of these tasks that I thought were important, that I thought had to be completed. And I've learned when something comes up in life, I always ask myself the same question. When I'm on my deathbed, did blank really matter? Did it really matter that I cleaned my bathroom every single Saturday? It's a simple answer. The answer is no. Did it really matter that I mopped my floors twice a week? No. Did it really matter that I had the most current and updated decor in my house? No, it did not. And when you look at questions through that filter, does it really matter? You can find the answer so, so easily. There are a couple questions in life that the answer really does matter, but the majority of them, 99% of them, the answer is no. It does not matter. So in the moment, you may think it is super important, but just put it in that question. On your deathbed, does blank really matter? And I promise you will find the answer very quickly. Oh, the next one, I love. Take the risk. Always take the risk. If you are trying to make a decision, should I do this? Should I do this? This decision is really safe. This one has risk. Always take the risk. My daughters have had decisions to make in life about various things. I always tell them, take the risk. I am someone that has had to learn to take the risk. Generally, the things that have risk attached to them have the biggest payoff, the biggest reward, will make you the happiest. There are going to be times that you fail, but it's always worth it. Take the risk. And when my oldest daughter was graduating from high school, it is a tradition where she goes to school that you paint the top of your cap that goes with your graduation gown. And she could not decide what to put on the top of the cap. So she decided to paint on the top of her graduation cap, take the risk. And I love it. Such a simple quote, but it sums it up. I love take the risk. I can't imagine living a safe, comfortable, never get out of my comfort zone life. And I know so many people do that and I just take the risk. That's all I can say. So if you all been on my channel for a while, you know that I have two dogs and I had three miniature schnauzers before I had Maxie and Pollux. Pollux, you have a peanut butter bone too? What you got, Mooey? You got a peanut butter bone? And all of my dogs, except for one, we adopted from animal shelters, or they were rescue animals. They needed homes. And my husband is the one who said this. He said, every dog needs a home. We adopted a senior dog. The dog needed a home. We brought Benny into our home, and he had the most wonderful last four years of his life. So we always adopt from animal shelters, our rescues. It is just makes my heart so happy to help the animals that are in need. Open your home to an animal that needs you. It is so important. Be productive. Live your life. Spend your days, but be productive. I know so many people that do nothing. They literally sit on the couch and watch television. They do nothing. And I have such a hard time wrapping my mind around how that person feels. To me, they couldn't be happy. They couldn't be fulfilled. I need to be productive. I wake up in the morning, I have a to-do list. And it may be silly little things, but it's things that I want to get done. Not necessarily things that need to be done, but things that I want to get done. And as I go through my day, I love to mark things off my list. Some days it's a very short list. Some days it's a long list but I enjoy being productive. It makes me feel fulfilled and useful and makes my days interesting. And so my life advice is always be productive. And it's okay to be lazy some days. I'm not saying that at all. I have the random lazy day and kind of going hand in hand with that is ask a lot of yourself. Don't let yourself be lazy. Don't let yourself do things half-ass. Don't let yourself 
just slide by all the time? Ask a lot of yourself. Ask yourself to be better. Ask yourself to put in the effort. Commit. Do the commitment. Do the things. Really pay attention to the details. Do your best. I really think that that will make you feel so much better about yourself. Just ask something of yourself. If you're stuck in a decision-making situation, what should you do or how should you move forward? Just realize that you're the one living your life. Nobody else is living your life. You have to make the decision that is best for you. Don't think about how your decision is gonna look from somebody who is looking at your life. Think about the decision from you, your point of view. You're living your own life. For example, don't think about, oh my, you know, my best friend is gonna think so-and-so of me if I don't do so-and-so. It doesn't matter what your best friend thinks. What matters is what you think. You're the one living your life. If you don't like your job and you are super unhappy and unfulfilled, if you're miserable when you go to that job, find another job. It doesn't matter who thinks that you should stay at that job. You're the one living your life. You're the one that has to go there every day. You're the one that has to spend the hours doing something that you're not enjoying. Make the decision and do something different. It's your life. The last little bit of life's motivation is you need to realize that sometimes people just suck. As sad as that is, it's true. I have stopped trying to figure out other people, but I have learned to just kind of detach myself and just say, sometimes people just suck. And it really is freeing to look at life that way and know that sometimes people just suck. So those are my life lessons, motivation, things I live by, and the reason I don't make New Year's resolutions. I just look back at my list of 15 and keep on living my life. I'll see you in the next video.